treat for you because we're going to be doing a VBS recap. So let's stand up and sing, I have decided to follow Jesus.
majestic. Yep. And as, as we head into prayer time, I invite you to, uh, to bow your heads. And we've got a lot to pray about, a lot to thank God for. And let's, uh, let's begin this conversation with God in this way. Father God, we love you so very much. And God, we praise you. And God, we thank you so much for your, your greatness. God, we thank you for your presence here in this place. And God, we thank you for this past week that was and for this Vacation Bible School that took place here. Lord, we thank you for, for so many kids uh, being here and spending time here and enjoying fellowship with each other and, and growing in their walk with you. God, we thank you so much for, for the uh, dozens of volunteers that poured uh, uh, time and energy and, and resources into, into loving on these kids and pointing them towards you. And Lord, we thank you most, most of all, most importantly, for lives changed, for the work that you've done. In, in hearts and in lives as, as uh, these, these kids grow and, and uh, have this foundation of this relationship with you. And so, Lord, work in and through each one of us. God, as we celebrate today, as we sing these songs, God, as we learn about what, what uh, the kids learned about this week, God, as we show highlights, God, as we, as we just enjoy and look back on your faithfulness and the work that you've done, God, uh, work in our hearts, work in our minds, and lead us. God, uh, don't give up on us. Meet us where we're at. And Lord, help us in our walk with you. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward and begin passing the offering plates. And as they do, I just have a couple quick announcements, some things that I want to share with you. Uh, first of all, one of our partners, we, we partner with different organizations locally, regionally, and globally, uh, seeking to be witnesses and follow Jesus' words in Acts uh, chapter 1, verse 8. But one of our partners is with Oakland Hope, and they had their open house just this past Thursday. And for those who have seen it from the very beginning and different things going on, uh, you guys, it has changed so very much. There's been so, uh, so much great work that's been done there. And so uh, we have an opportunity as a church to volunteer there on August 20th. 
And if you are available from 9 till noon that day, they can use some help uh, unloading trucks, moving things around, uh, helping out in whatever way you can. Greg Stearns is somewhere, Greg Stearns is right here. And uh, if you would let Greg Stearns know or the church office know, they need to know how many to, uh, to plan for. But that's just Saturday, August 20th. You'll find out more information on that. It will be on our board soon. Uh, also, want to let you know, September 18th is just this very, very important day in the life of our church because our church, uh, in different names, uh, Drayton Heights and Clarkston and now Waypoint, has existed for 55 years. And so this day on September 18th, we're going to celebrate this, and we're going to bring people together, and we're going to tell stories, and we're going to celebrate God's faithfulness. We're going to have lots of cool elements inside and outside. We'll tell you a whole bunch of them, and there's a couple that we aren't going to tell you. You'll just have to be there, and hopefully it'll be a good surprise. So pray for good weather uh, on a lot of this stuff. But uh, that is one service on September 18th from 1030 till 12, and then a cookout and kids games and all that stuff following that. So that's a day that you want to have marked on your calendar. Invite friends, family, and we just anticipate in this great, great time of celebrating what God has been doing through our church and what God is going to do. It's two sides of one coin. And then uh, just one last uh, announcement that I want to share with you guys. Uh, Todd Traver's done just a ton of work with, with uh, several of the guys here and gals here on, uh, on facilities care here. And we've got a need where we're going to be putting up uh, metal siding on our building to help protect, uh, protect some spots where water is getting in. And so over the next uh, couple months, we're going to have some time periods where we can use volunteers. And just we want you to stay tuned for that, watch for email, watch for communication on it. And it can be, it can be simply, you know, some, some guys and gals here, br you know, bring a drill because we've got hundreds of holes to drill into this, uh, in, into this wood to get ready to put the siding up and, and, and all this. So uh, just watch for details on that, and uh, we look forward to great days ahead on that. And uh, appreciate your help. And so I want you to turn your attention to the video screens as we continue to celebrate Vacation Bible School. i 
Well, good morning, everyone. And man, did you guys pick a great Sunday to be with us here at Waypoint. Wow, no, I, I'm so serious. Um, I, I really feel sorry for those who chose to do something different with their day than come here today because we, as we've already mentioned, we are wrapping up in just a fantastic week of VBS and, and um, I've got a bunch of my friends my, from VBS sitting here in the front with us and we've got a lot that we're gonna try to cover to try to help give you guys just a little feel for what we all experienced this past week. Um, we're gonna keep the segment short because Pastor Kyle's attention span is really short um, and, and we're just gonna keep things moving along. We'll probably throw in a few songs um, so we'll keep you guys on your toes and everything. But uh, as, as you can tell, we've got this cave theme going on. That's because VBS for us this year was Cave Quest VBS, following Jesus, the light of the world. Now, some of you may be thinking, why caves? I mean, uh, how many of you have ever been, you've walked into a cave, you know, an actual cave that you could like, yeah, walk in? Um, they're kind of creepy places, right? They can be, right? I mean, because there's things that you can like bump your heads on and there's, there's, there's things you could trip over. And if you go in far enough, Usually there's artificial lights there, you know, some uh, either flashlight or they've got some, some lights on the ceiling or something going on. And because if you get into a really deep cave and you turn out the lights, what do you notice? It's really dark, right? It's really, really dark. Um, but you know what? Caves are, are marvelous places too God, in, the, in God's creation. Um, there's so many cool things, and, and the kids got to experience and got to, got to you know, see some of those really cool things that God has put in those caves for us. But one of the things that I've noticed about caves, all caves out there, is that they, they tend to be very dark places. And so they help us to appreciate the, the light, whether it's a light from a flashlight or from a, a man-made light of some other sort or from the sun outside, right? And so in Cave Cut Quest this, this week, we, we got to appreciate the light a little bit more. And not just, not just our cool little physical lights, you know, the man-made lights that we got going on here, but, but we understood that there's another kind of darkness out there, and it's a spiritual darkness. And so for us, this week was about learning more about Jesus, the light of the world, and about how we can follow him. And that's what, that's what our week was kind of filled with, was some of the how-tos of how we can follow Jesus better. So like I said, we're just going to give you kind of a, a really quick rundown of what this week looked like in the lives of these kids at VBS. And you know what? Like I said, you guys can really be walk away from here today being thankful that you came because you're going to see not just the passion and excitement in these kids, but some of the things that they got to learn as well. And to help me do this, do all this, I'm going to ask um, our, our family pastor, our VBS director, and my better half, Carrie Gerald, to come up here and help me out with some of this. So yeah, give her a hand. Thank you. Now, I just got to say this. You can go ahead and have a seat. Um, I had, had this really fun, really fun marriage moment between services. Okay, she doesn't know that I'm going to share this, but just this fun marriage moment. She, she, she came over to me and she said, um, you need to talk a little less next service. And she told me that I need to talk a little less this service. Okay, so that's my fun marriage moment. Okay. <sighs> those I don't of you, know what's so funny know, about that. Those of you that know us, though, yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, we're going to just give you, uh, le like I said, little quick snippets of, of what this week looked like in the lives of the kids. And each day of VBS, Monday through Friday, started with an opening session right here. And I'm going to let Carrie tell you a little bit about that. So I want you to imagine that the chairs are gone from this room. So there's no boundaries, basically, except for the walls. And there are 110 kids in here, in this room, ready to have a grand day. And the first thing that we need to do is help them and have a great time, but get their focus in the right place on Jesus, the light of the world. And isn't our worship team just incredible? I just want to say thank you. Thank you to Melissa Marin, Sarah Reichelt, and their team of amazing teenagers that, that came and shared Jesus through song and worship. They were so incredible that, yes, it was not total mass chaos even though it might have looked like it. We were singing and dancing and having an incredible time while we came to the feet and the heart of Jesus Christ in the opening time and in the closing time as well. One thing I want to mention about the opening and closing, well, a, a, a little side note about our volunteers. It, um, we had about 110 kids here. We had 70 people who um, volunteered to watch those kids, so we almost had a one-on-one -on -one situation. One thing I want you to know is that we had 25 teenagers who gave of their week. 
Thank you, thank you, teenagers. That's something to be proud of because they are exercising leadership here in our church already, pouring into the generation coming right behind them. And they did an incredible job. Two of those teenagers are not a part of our church but came to our vacation Bible school from the time they were children, and now they're too old to participate, and they came and gave back in leadership areas. So I was so thankful for that. Our opening time was wonderful. We sang good songs. We had funny skits. We did Bible points. We met Bible buddies. And we also did experiments in the closing, too. Kids, is there anybody who wants to share about a time in the opening or closing, something you really liked, a favorite song, a skit that was funny, or a Bible point? Um, Riley, I saw your hand. Who else? Who else? Asher, did you have your hand up? You want to come up here and tell us something about the opening, the time that we were in this room that you really liked, what you really loved? The song. The song. Do you have a favorite? Um, a, uh, no, I like all of them. All of them. All of them, all of them. Riley, what's something you wanted to share? I like when Clark comes in. He, he's really funny, and I think he might have passed the test, and I hoped he did. And We had Clark Cavern with us, and Clark Cavern was learning our Bible points along with us every day. So she started out a little confused, but by the end of the day, she got how Jesus makes a difference in our lives. Brooke, what's your favorite? Um, when I tell Violet in the picture. <laughs> when she saw Violet, her sister, in the nursery in the picture. So <laughs> that was awesome. All right, thanks, guys. You can have a seat. And uh, Asher mentioned the songs, and I just wanted to, to add to that, that, that each of the kids that came to VBS get, get, got received, excuse me, a... <laughs> A, a CD of the VBS songs to, to, to take home with them. And I don't know about you guys, you parents out there that have kids from past VBSs, but I know that in our house that, that CD gets played almost daily for a whole year until the next VBS comes around. And, you know, that's which, you know, for parents it can get a little annoying sometimes, but you know what? It is great for the kids because it is taking those truths of God's word in, in song form and it is getting it into their hearts and minds. And what, you know, what better thing for them to carry with them throughout life? than have that truth there with them. Um, uh, Monday, we focused on, and it just got us started off on the right foot, again, talking about the light and everything, um, that we had a different Bible point every day, and the, you know, the, the leaders would say one half of it, and the kids would respond with the second half. So we're going to let the kids do that the first time, and then everybody's going to have to help us you know, the rest of the day. All right? So the first day we learned that Jesus gives us hope. Okay, now that everybody's heard it and the kids are awake now, and now we're all going to try it together. I'm just going to repeat it. This is what we do in VBS, too. All right, so Jesus gives us hope. Follow him. Right, and on the first day, we learned that that hope came from um, the Messiah that God had promised. And people were waiting hundreds and even thousands of years for this hope to, to come into their world because there was a spiritual darkness that happened way back in, in the story. Of man and and so people were looking forward to it and longing for it and in that on that first day we experienced a different kind of darkness in our Bible room a physical darkness because the we were having issues with our lights right and so we kept hoping and and looking for anticipating for it for more light to come into our room and just like the people were hoping and waiting for the Messiah to come along and then eventually of course John the Baptist came on the scene and said he's coming I mean he is he is coming and then Jesus stepped onto the scene and the, and the light of the world was there for everyone to see. And so we're going um, to have our, our, uh, our worship team come, come up and share with us another song as we learn that he is the light of the world. He is the hope for all mankind. Let's stand and sing, My Hope is in the Lord. Upon the God who gives, as 
Okay, so day two, our Bible point, get ready, our Bible point was that Jesus gives us courage. Follow him. Right, and on day two, in day, day two's Bible story, we talked about the time when Jesus and Peter walked on the water. And you remember that story? That Jesus sent his disciples ahead of him while he um, down to go across the lake in the boat, and he dismissed the crowds and went up into the hillside to pray for a little while. And then he joined them. And while he was on his way, there was a storm going on, and they were in the boat. And, uh, and then they saw somebody coming to them out on the lake, walking on the water. And at first they freaked out, and, uh, and then they realized that it was Jesus, and Jesus said, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. And Peter said, Peter said, if it's really you, Lord, then tell me to come to you on the water. And, and, and Jesus looked at him and said, come on, buddy, get out of the boat, right? Right? And so Peter got out of the boat, and he walked on the water, and he walked to Jesus. And then all of a sudden, his, his fisherman instincts kicked in, and he looked around at the waves and the wind, and he started to panic, and he started to sink. And what did Jesus do, guys? Reached out to him. And he caught him, right, and helped him back up. And he said, oh, Peter, why did you doubt? I'm right here, you know. You can trust in me. And then they got back into the boat, and the water was calm again. And we had opportunity that day. This is, this is my second favorite day, by the way. Opportunity that day in, in our Bible time to, to walk on a liquid ourselves. Okay, it wasn't water. Um, for those of you who are science guys, it was a non-Newtonian fluid. All right? So, but it was, it was awesome. It was fun. And, um, and everybody got to walk across this stuff, right? So, um, but I wanted to, to toss it over to, to Carrie because she's going to share another area in VBS that we covered that day. And it was all about courage, too. Yes. Every day the kids went to Kid Vid Cinema, which was led by Holly West. She did a fabulous job. She's not in service here, but we can give her a hand. <laughs> cool things about Kid Vid Cinema was that they got to go in there and watch a movie about a kid their age who was um, living out whatever the Bible point was of the day and showing how it applies to their lives and how they could live it out. And also in Kid Vid Cinema was the place where we got to actually open the Bible, look up the Bible verse of the day, that, the memory verse that we had, see that it's really in there, and get some chance to talk about why that Bible verse is important in our lives and what it means to live by the principle found there in the Bible. So it was a great, great place for kids to go. And on this day, we invited these two lovely young ladies up here to share because they have a real life story. 
to share with you today. This is Riley and Peyton, and they are sisters, and they have had to rely on the courage that only Jesus can bring for something special in their family, something that they've experienced for a long time now. And I'm going to let you tell their story. We're going to start with Riley. Riley, you have had a unique circumstance in your life. What's been going on in your life? Tell us about that. So I had a um, eight surgeries. Um, I had an open heart surgery when I was about five months old. Um, and I, my heart was like sideways off to the middle and had a hole in it. And once the doctor fixed the hole, it found out that sideways off to the middle, it was pumping right. It was pumping like the right blood and we just left it sideways and off to the middle, so it's still sideways. And the doctor said he had to stand on his head to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I had um, seven nose surgeries. Um, they had my nasal passages, they were clogged, so I was still breathing, but I was breathing through my mouth, so they took a laser and went in, and they um, unclogged, um, like, got it out and stuff. And right now, I'm all right. So Riley's nine years old, and she has been to the hospital more times than she can count. And she spent a lot of time with a lot of doctors doing very unpleasant things. And she's going to probably tell you about one of those in a second. But it's, it affects the entire family, right? And Riley has a younger sister, Peyton. And Peyton has watched her sister endure some tough times and has felt the pain of wanting to be strong and brave for her sister and ha has spent time praying for her sister and doing some other things. Peyton, what are some things you do to help encourage your sister in times when she's um, struggling? Um, sometimes I try, when she's um, not doing something funny, I try to make it into something funny and she kind of laughs and sometimes I give her my toys to play with. Mm -hmm. Special yeah. ones that sometimes they argue over maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so I just wanted to, to remind us all that we all have times where we're struggling, where we don't have the power within ourselves to, to face the circumstance we need to with bravery. But we were reminded on day two that Jesus gives us courage. Follow him. Thank you, Riley and Peyton, for sharing with us today. Okay, in day three's Bible point, we learned that Jesus gives us direction. Follow him. And on that day, the story came out of Matthew chapter 5 through 7, which is all about the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus, of course, was giving lots of direction for, ev for all of his followers, for the people who had gathered there, and for us, about how we can live this life in a way that is pleasing to God. And so we spent some time, not, not on the whole thing, but on, on highlights of the Sermon on the Mount. And, uh, and we just focused on those things, again, to help us learn how we can, we can better follow after Jesus. And we're going to ask the, uh, the worship team to come on up and share with us in learning to be the light. Let's stand and sing. So much pride of living in your world. Save you what you did for me. You gave me something I want everyone to see.
I think uh, Kiri is going to share with us a little bit about a couple more of the segments of VBS that the kids experienced. Two very, very special stations, the snack station and games. Can't have VBS without those. There was a wonderful team of ladies who worked serving, serving in the kitchen, serving up really great snacks for us. Uh, if I think most of them were in the first service, but if you happen to be in here and you were any day served on the snack team, could you just stand for us and let us thank you? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That team was a well-oiled machine. They had to get snacks out for everyone, help them wash their hands, pray, learn how this particular snack applied to the Bible point they were learning of the day, get them to eat it, and move them on in 20 minutes. And let me tell you, they did it right every time. Every time. Thank you, Sue Kozlowski led that team. I asked her if she would be willing to um, lead in the snack area, and she said, yes, I will, and I don't want your help getting my team. I'll pick them out myself. So she went out and she recruited people and there was no way to say no to her and she had a team working. Also in games, games were led by Erica Serio. She did a fabulous job <laughs> along with Casey McGrath and Marissa Traver, who also put our video together, by the way, and Jake Reynolds. They did a great job in the games area. <laughs> The kids absolutely loved getting wet. But what they loved even more than getting wet was getting their crew leaders soaked. That was super fun to them. So uh, that was a, a great, great time. Um, if you were, by the way, the reason why Vacation Bible School is not absolute chaos is because there are small groups of five or six kids who are traveling around with two adults or adult and a, an adult and a teenager who are responsible for that little group and become their mentors and their buddies for the week. If you were a crew leader or a crew helper, could you please stand and let us thank you throughout the week. Thank you very, very much. As I have heard back from all of you leaders, I realize one thing very, very clearly. It's not only the kids who get a great experience the week of Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School is impactful to those of us who are serving, and especially because of you kids and the blessing that you bring to us. I know that there's a couple of you who would like to share. I've asked one, one person to come up and share. If you are an adult or teenager who served in G VBS and you have something that you'd briefly like to share about how that weekend or this week has impacted you, just make your way forward. We'll give you a chance to share. Um, I've asked my daughter, Rachel, who was a crew leader, to come and share one of her experiences at Vacation Bible School. Hi, everybody. Um, Vacation Bible School is an awesome, awesome chance to get to be with some kids and just be their friend. Um, I had a group of four to six-year-olds this week, so they were quite young, but also delightful and, and just a wonderful group. Um, the fourth day of VBS, we were in KidVid Cinema, and we were talking in our small group, and we don't often stay on topic in my small group, which is fine. Um, and, and Holly had told us to make a heart with our hands or something like that. We were going to pray. Um, and not all the kids were getting it. And one of my girls just started crying. And so I thought, oh, she can't, she can't make the hand heart thing. And so she's upset. Um, but she was crying really, really hard. Um, and so when we finished praying, I said, 
what's the matter? And she just kind of flew into my arms, um, and she just cried and cried and cried. Um, and when I finally got it out of her, I realized that she was sad because she had a friend who passed away this year. This little girl is five years old, um, and she lost a close friend of hers. And she said, I miss him. I wish he was still alive. Um, and my heart broke because I don't understand a pain quite like that, and I'm 21 years old. And here's this little five-year-old who has this giant weight that's clearly, um, she carries it with her because we weren't really talking about something that has to do with that. That's just something that was on her heart. And um, I, I let her cry, and I, I had a wet shoulder from her tears, and I just held her, and I said, you know, the Bible says the Lord Jesus is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. And that means that when you miss somebody, that when you're sad, Jesus cares, Jesus is with you. Um, and, and it was really, really hard. And I, she, she finished crying, and she goes, okay, can we go to snack now? And I was like, yeah, we can go to snack, but I need a minute. <laughs> so um, I, I kind of felt like, all I could do in that moment was just hold her, be loved to her, and sh share about the love of Jesus with her. So, Are there any other leaders that wanted to take just a quick second and share about the impact of VBS on, on you? I don't want to, I know you're shy, but this microphone's not as scary as it seems. Is there anyone else who just wanted to give a word? got a couple of nudgers here telling me to come on up. Um, so this is my second year of doing games, and um, I looked over some of the games, and I knew everybody was going to get wet, especially on Friday, and that was, I think, everybody's favorite day of the week was Friday, because it got pretty wet. We had a couple of shakers, because they were sopping wet. Um, but I enjoyed being with the kids, seeing them smile every day. We had perfect weather so those of you who prayed this week thank you thank you thank you we had the best weather ever um and um i was one of the leaders that got dunked on on friday uh, i had a group of kids come up to me on monday and asked if they could dunk a bucket of water on my head and i said well if you come back on friday we'll see if we can make that work and i allowed them to dunk it over my head and they were just over the moon about that <laughs> thanks All right, day four's Bible point was that Jesus gives us love. Follow him. And this was my favorite day sharing in the Bible room um, with the kids because, of course, this day was all about Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection. And the kids got to hear, you know, some, some of the painful things that Jesus endured on our behalf. And they, they started to connect the dots of how those things that he suffered were because of the wrong things that we've done. And they got to experience, they got to see, you know, this cool little shadow play of, of, of uh, you know, the cross behind a, a curtain and light and a light on it and hear the sounds of, of a hammer hitting the metal. Um, and so it was, it was kind of intense. Um, but they also got to see on the, on the, on the, the flip side of that, a, a moment of the resurrection when the angels were there at, the, at an empty tomb saying to his followers, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. And so... Th Thursday was a special day for us because, again, a little bit later, and we're going to come back to this in just a few minutes, um, the kids had opportunity in the closing to take that experience and to take what they were processing a step further. And we're going to let Carrie share with that a little bit after the worship team comes up and shares with us, Jesus loves me. Let's stand and sing.
at the closing on day four, we gave kids a chance to respond to the amazing love of Jesus. And we did this in, in, in a couple of ways. We wanted kids to understand what they were doing and the decisions that they would be making as Jesus spoke to their hearts. And so we told them, there are some of you who, who are here in the room today who it, it may be your first time to ever really understand what Jesus has done for you. And you want to enter into a forever friendship with God through Jesus by asking him to lead your life and to come in and to forgive your sins. If that is you today, we're going to pray with you about that. And then there are those of you kids who've already entered into that forever friendship with God through Jesus. But this week at v Vacation Bible School, you have been hearing God speak to your heart. And you know that you want to tell him, I want to follow you in obedience in that area. And so we made it very clear the decisions that kids would be making. And then we, we prayed for that first group of kids who wanted to ask Jesus into their life for the very first time. And then we said amen. And then we prayed again for kids who've already done that in the past, but who wanted to um, make some sort of new commitment in their heart and life to Jesus this, this week at Vacation Bible School. So the kids understood it very, very well. They also had crew leaders who were helping lead an area. While this time was going on and we were explaining what was about to happen, I know that Bev Thompson shared with me later on, her group was right, right here up front and as we started talking about it her little kids they were they were young kids they were the youngest group of kids besides preschoolers who were traveling with us and they all started saying I want to do that I want to pray that prayer uh, and unison all around to her we want to do that we want to do that right now and she wanted to make sure that they absolutely understood what they were committing to and what was going on so she actually grabbed her group and they just walked right out the door and went and sat in a quiet spot where she could uh, further explain the commitment that they were making and the decision between a first-time commitment and, and um, recommitting your life to Jesus Christ. And that is exactly what we did. After we prayed, we gave ch the kids a chance to signify their response in their heart to the Lord. And we let them come up to the cross here and put up some paper to represent the decisions that they had made. Um, the pink ones represent kids who say, this very day was the first time I really ever asked Jesus to come and lead my life. And so, yes, I'm a good VBS director. I counted them. There's 24 up there, 24 pink ones, brand new decisions for Jesus. Praise God. The yellow ones signify kids who, who said, I have done that before, and I know that Jesus said he's never going to leave me. I don't have to pray that type of prayer again, And but I but God has been speaking to me, and whatever it is, it could be all different things up here. But they wanted to come up and say, Jesus, you've done something in my life this week, and I'm letting you know I will follow you in whatever that is that you've, that you've done with me this week. And so that's what the yellow ones are for. And I am just so very thankful for all of you who took the time to pray for the ministry of Vacation Bible School because God did do what only he can do, and we're giving praise. And I don't think there's really anything I can add to that, but let me just say that for me, this right here represents the main reason that this church spends hours upon hours and, and lots of dollars on VBS. Because I don't know if you guys realize, I mean, that's just huge in the kingdom of God. And, and statistically, statistics tell us time and time again that most people who come to Christ do so before the age of 14. This right here is kingdom stuff going on. And we've got a lot to praise God for today. So we're just, we're just thanking him for that. Now, I'm going to move right along or I'm going to lose it. Um, day five, day five, we focused, we followed that up with the, with the Bible point that Jesus gives us his power. Follow, Follow him. him. Right, and we followed up the story of the crucifixion and the resurrection with what happened afterwards when Jesus spent like 40 days with his followers on earth, continuing to teach them, prepare their hearts for his ascension, and then also, and also the, the coming of the Holy Spirit. And the thing that he told them was, hey guys, stay here in Jerusalem until you receive the gift of my Father, the Holy Spirit. And so we got, to, we got to hear about that and get to understand the Holy Spirit a little bit better. You know, it's still very mysterious to us, um, but, but got to experience that on day five. And we got a couple of special things that we wanted to, to do with you um, and to, to experience with the kids here before we leave today um, about the day five stuff. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let you talk a little bit about some of those other things before we wrap up in the song and stuff. Okay. 
All right, one of the stations that they visited, a highlight again for kids, was Imagination Station, which is just like it sounds. A chance to use your imagination to experience cool science uh, experiments, watch amazing things happen, and then talk about how they apply to the Bible point of the day. They also got a present in Imagination Station every day, something they got to, to do with their hands, make or, or experience. They broke open geodes. They did all kinds of crazy cool things, and then they got to take it home and show it to mom and dad and show it how it related to the Bible point of the day. So they got something cool every day. Um, Melanie Traver and Danette Many and Amy Yang led that station and they were just the perfect people for it. So thank you, thank you very much to them. <laughs> also, I just want to really quick mention that um, there, there were the, the nursery helpers that um, didn't get to experience all of these stations but they made it possible for, their, for people, um, the little ones that they watched, their moms and their um, grandmas, to be able to. And so Charlotte Prater and Brittany Thompson and um, Sarah West and Sophia Traver, they spent a lot of time with the little babies. Thank you, thank you very much for doing that. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is that we're trying to also instill our, in our kids, even though VBS is, is a week for them to really experience things, we also want them to be givers back of the overflow of the blessings God has given them. And so our partner that we were helping out through our Vacation Bible School mission, um, um, mission time was Covenant Hills Camp who has been involved in the hundreds of people, hundreds of kids especially, coming to, coming to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And so our kids brought in their nickels, dimes, pennies, lots of change. They did extra chores. They returned bottles. They went looking in couch cushions. And they found money, and they brought it in. And throughout the week of Vacation Bible School, we raised $719.30 for the ministry of Covenant Hills Camp. Way to go, guys. Way to go. One of the things that we talked about on that last day is that one of the main reasons that Jesus gave us his Holy Spirit was so that we could share, we could take the power, that power through him, and we could share about Jesus with the rest of our world. And that's one of the ways that, that we're doing it is by partnering with Covenant Hills to continue to share Jesus. Another thing that, that was really cool about this year's VBS, uh, the set that you see behind us, um, this year was not made by the folks here at Waypoint. Actually, this, this stage set up here was created by the Clarkston Community Church, and we are actually now the fourth church that has used this set. And, and there are a lot of the decorations that we got, again, from them. We got like a, a, just a trailer full of stuff that has been used now four times. And guess what? We're passing it on to a fifth church as soon as we're done with it here today. The Oxford Free Methodist Church is going to be taking this and using it in their VBS a week from now is when they're going to start. <laughs> so it's just, it's just been really cool for us to see, again, how God is at work in and through the life of his people. And I'd like to kind of close us here, but if I could have as many of the kids that are up front here form a circle up here with Mrs. Gerald, if you'd like to come forward. We got to do one last thing that we did in Bible time that was part science-y, part, you know, showed us the Bible point. So come on and get, make a circle, make a, make a circle. Just got to be holding hands kind of circle. Yep, we got to get everybody in here. Hold on, can we, can, we, can we make room right in here for Brooke? Yep, here, let's go right in here. There you go, right there, right here. Very good. Awesome. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to go right here. Peyton and Brody, can you guys grab onto one end of this? Now, if we're doing this right, this, I got this little sci-fi tube thing here in front of me. If we do this right, if everybody's holding hands, something's going to happen when we all, when they, these two grab the end of it. Let's see. Okay, everybody's got to grab on hands. Here we go. When it's working, they're all connected. When it's not, somebody's not connected. All right, so I'm going to say thank you guys. Hold on just a second. I'm going to grab onto that for just a second. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. We've got to stay connected to our power source, the light of the world, Jesus Christ, so that we can continue to shine out his light for him in our world. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you so much for this time that, that we could share and celebration of Cave Quest VBS and just a, a week of wonderful things 
here in the life of our church and especially our kids. And we just want to ask that you would continue to help us be reflectors of your light to our world so that, that they can see you and can come closer to you, God, in, in their walk with you. We love you so much, and we just want to pray these things in your precious holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Are we gonna, um, you guys are dismissed. The worship team is just going to come and close us. So you guys can be dismissed, though. Thank you so much.